Stay tuned for a meeting of the City of Calabasas Commission. The meeting will be broadcast using Zoom and the City CTV Channel 3. Commission members may teleconference into the meeting without noticing or posting an agenda at their teleconference location. Besides the live TV and Zoom broadcast, the live stream of the meeting may be viewed online at cityofcalabasas.com slash CTV Live. If you want to provide public comment, press raise hand if you're using Zoom or star 9 if you're joining by phone. Just unmute yourself by pressing star 6. Say your name and the city you live in. You'll be allowed three minutes to address the commission regarding any item within the subject matter jurisdiction of the commission. If the power or internet goes out lasting more than 15 minutes, or if there's some event that prevents the commission from meeting or prevents you from providing public comment, then the meeting will be adjourned. Any items noticed as public hearings will be rescheduled to the next regular commission meeting. Any other agenda items the Commission has not taken action on will be placed on a future agenda. Now, a meeting of the City of Calabasas Commission. Greetings, I'm Charlotte Meyer, and we are um, about to start the Parks, Recreation, and Education Commission meeting. We'll begin the meeting by taking a roll call of the Commissioners. Uh, when I call your name, please say here. Laurel Ford? Here. Eat, Patton. Here. Negrin. Safari. Negan. Yes, sir. Neg Negan. Thank Negan. you. Stephanie Williams. Here. Julie Elgener. Here. Brad Wiseman. And our student commissioner, Annika Kolanu. Here. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Annika, since this is your last meeting and you're going off to college, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. Okay. Can everyone please stand? Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge, I allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to, to the republic for which, which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all. Please be seated. Thank you. May I have a motion to may I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move we approve the agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Who's second? With Stephanie. Stephanie's oh, second. Is it? Okay, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Um, any discussion? Okay. Let's just take a I just have one quick discussion. The only discussion I had is that I did not remember us having a, a motion on a public communication, something that was not on the agenda, specifically the request to have a dog park at Wild Walnut Park. I'm not sure that I just did not recall that there was a motion around that, particularly since it was not an agendized item. So that's the only um, potential revision that I have to the minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I, look, we're, really right now, I'm just going to do the uh, approval of the agenda. And then afterwards uh, on our, it's the approval of the commission minute. That's I'm glad you were so thorough. Thank you. My fault. That's my fault. Good for you. Thank I'm you. glad you're right on top of that. Okay. So um, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve the agenda. Uh, let's take a vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. The motion passes unanimously. Okay. Now we have a motion, please, to approve the pre-commission minutes as written. Um, is there a second? Okay. Well. Well. Okay. Let's go straight to the to the um, discussion. Uh, are there any um, discussion? Uh, Julie, you mentioned something. Yes. It was on the fourth page under oral communications, public comment. I, there was a, um, a notification or uh, that there was a discussion around, or at least a request that the commission continue their efforts to have a dog park at Wild Walnut Park. I don't remember voting on that. Usually we can, my understanding from, is that we can only vote on agendized items and 
that was a public comment item. So I don't recall, we may have voted on it, but I don't remember that. And I don't know that we can vote on items that are not publicly agendized in advance. That, that's correct, Commissioner Elgin. That is a that is a, a typo. So if we can, it, when we make the motion to approve the minutes, we have to put that we're going to correct that error. There was no vote on that public comment. So uh, let's. Uh, so we're going to uh, let me think. Let me think. How I'm going to do this. I used to know how to do this right away. <laughs> oh, so we're going to amend the agenda, amend the motion to approve the agenda as written with the caveat that we are going to change the uh, information on page four regarding a vote on Wild Walnut Park. It was only um, public comments and we did not take a formal vote. Correct. Okay. All those in favor? I, oh, oh yes. I was gonna say, I make, an, I make a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. Second. Oh, very good. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Announcements and introductions. Erica, is that you? Or are you gonna do a statement? Um, that is, is not me. That is anything that the commissioners would like to say. Okay, would anybody like to discuss something that they've done, uh, perhaps relating to the city? Um, you visited a park or did something that, uh, yes, go ahead. Julie. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wanted to just make a recommendation. I didn't visited a park on Saturday that was in Oak Park. And one of the wonderful um, kind of items that I came across was that um, adjacent to public drinking fountains were uh, metal dog bowls that were attached to a chain and it allowed for the participants to be able to easily uh, pick up the, the bowl, use the public fountain to put water in the dog bowl and then put it back onto the ground. And so I saw several people using that and I thought that was just a wonderful way to make the parks more inclusive, particularly of people that were walking their dogs. So I took a photo of it. I'm happy to send it uh, separately if you'd like to see what that looks like. I can't imagine that the fiscal impact would be particularly high, but I thought that that was a wonderful addition to the park. I think that's a great idea. Okay, anybody else have any thoughts about that? I think that was a wonderful idea. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Um, well, I go to the tennis and swim club all the time, a lot, and uh, I noticed that um, they've had to cancel uh, after late after hours uh, the use of the pool because of the lack of staffing. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you because we summer's coming up, and that's really unfortunate that people won't be able to use um, the pools after five o'clock. Um, so maybe hopefully we can get somebody who knows a lifeguard and uh, get them interested in working at the tennis and swim club. Also the aquafit program um, that is um, used by seniors is in full swing and uh, used a lot. And the classes that I take, the cardioscope classes are uh, doing very well as well. So I'm happy to report that out. Um, okay, anybody else have any anything to report, introductions? Announcements. Okay. I'll say something really quickly. In March, okay. I I did I was a counselor for our, our LVUSD outdoor ed program for two schools for Round Meadow and for White Oak Elementary. And for both schools, um, one one of the days we spent was at De Anza Park. And I know the kids had a blast. One of the activities was we did was building chariots and then racing them across the grass. And I know a lot of kids had fun with that. And it was a good way to expose, because I know we had COVID the past two years and I know they didn't have um, the ability to do outdoor ed, but now the kids know that Tianza Park is a facility that they can use and that they can come to, to play in. And they saw the hockey courts, which I now believe will be turned into pickleball courts. Um, but now they know that that's a place that they can have fun in this summer. Great, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, next we're gonna move on to Charlotte, public comment. Oh yes. Sorry to interrupt, I just, I saw that beautiful coverage 
of the bunny hop, whatever Amy calls it now, the super cute bunny egg event. Trail. Thank you, bunny trail. Um, and um, if I know we're going to have a chance later too, but I just wanted to say, I know how much that means to the community and it seems like the staff did another lovely event. So I just wanted to thank everyone for that. Um, yeah, my grandchildren have had an have had experiences on the bunny trail, <laughs> and um, it is a really special experience. And Amy, who is the um, person who who was behind it all, it was her vision to use the walkway there all the way around as the bunny trail, and she designed the whole. It's her concept. So I was I love going there many times. I've been there many many times. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, we're going to move on to continued business. Oh no, public comments. Um, before we begin public comments, uh, if there's anybody who wishes to speak, I would just like to say that we are precluded from participating in a give and take discussion when somebody uh, addresses the commission during public comments and you have a full three minutes and, we're, and we want you to use every second if you need to. Uh, we're excited to hear what you have to say. Your input is valued. So is there anybody who wishes to participate uh, waiting in the wings to uh, address the commission? Chair, there are four people in the public audience raise their hands. Okay. Uh, first uh, one is Galvin Linderman, followed by Jeffrey Tufaro. Do we allow them to speak now? Okay. And the uh, well, is... Uh, Ten o'clock as well, or? I'm sorry. Should I just call them, or? Uh, um, do we need to give them three minutes time clock? Yes. Okay. Hold on. So the first person is I, I'm sorry, Galvin. Galvin Linderman. Linderman. Okay, Mr. Linderman. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gavin Linderman. I want to thank the commission for hearing my comments tonight. I'm here to speak on the multi-use plans for the De Anza Sport Court. I'm here for in an effort to encourage solutions that can include hockey at the facility and make the facility accessible to basketball, pickleball, and hockey. I'd also like to thank Ms. Green for her prompt and thorough correspondence over the last week. She's been instrumental in helping me better understand the issues at hand. Some of the commission members have shared that they enjoyed playing in Tri-Valley Roller Hockey League. What many people do not know is that Tri-Valley Roller Hockey League was the first inline roller hockey league in the country. This league was started just after the company Rollerblade created inline skates. In its peak, there are around 400 registered skaters in the program. This rink has historical significance to the roller community in the United States. Uh, the historical and unique nature of this league required that it has custom builds as this was groundbreaking at the time of conception. I'd like to also provide some additional feedback on the hockey usage at De Anza as it was a discussion point at the February 24th meeting. During COVID, organized sports such as hockey were fully shut down. Um, I want the commission to be aware that there's still a vibrant and enthusiastic hockey community in Calabasas. In fact, community members come together every Sunday night, which has always been the biggest hockey night at the park, to play pickup hockey for several hours. I mean, just last night, we had 26 skaters present for pickup games. These skaters ranged from high school students to adults in their 60s, all playing together, bettering their health, expanding their community, and using the facility. We're relatively on scene because we come out in the evenings. We come out as families are wrapping up their barbecues and parties are ending and the kids are going home from their playground time and we play roller hockey. We would like to be out there even more often. However, the goals which are required for pickup games are locked uh, at the facility Monday through Saturday. This is the reason why you don't see too many players out there during the weekdays. If the goals were made accessible, we'd expect to see more hockey activities Monday through Saturday. Uh, many of the youth who grew up playing in Tri-Valley Roller Hockey League are now young parents like myself, parenting a new generation of hockey enthusiasts in Calabasas. We hope to have this community resource available for our children to use. And speaking of parents, I'm the parent of two kids. My family frequents the De Anza Park very frequently. And um, considering the park should be inclusive for all, we would like to recommend that additional planning can be done to ensure that if there are 24 pickleball players playing on six courts, possibly, with 12 adults waiting to play, we're talking about additional 36 or more cars at the park during peak daytime hours when families are still accessing the park. I just think it's something to consider so we can try to figure out a way that this park remains inclusive for basketball, pickleball, and roller hockey. I'm here to offer myself as a resource to anybody um, in any way that I can to help find a way that 
again, all sports can be included. So we don't ask the public to make a decision on something like this. So thank you very much for hearing me out and I appreciate your guys' time. Okay, thank you very much for that information. Uh, the next person is, I believe, I, I only got the first name, Jeff. Yeah, next person is Jeffrey Tafaro, followed by Francisco Rivaro. Jeffrey? Okay, uh, Mr. Re Please unmute yourself. Re Hello? Okay. You can hear me? Okay, great. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Tafaro. I'm a local resident and have played at the De Anza Park since 2015. I'm a father of two and hope that one day I can teach my children how to skate at the rink in the near future. Based on this survey, it seems one of the main reasons why hockey is being considered to be removed is due to lining issues and the inability, inability to accommodate three sports. As the survey notes, the court surface cannot be striped to accommodate pickleball and hockey. However, we have alternatives to provide. A potential solution is to not have the rink striped for hockey. This would allow the rink to remain. While it would reduce the reality of future organized league games, this would still provide a great and safe place to play. I also have also heard an issue has to do with the surface type. We are aware that the Grape Arbor Parks basketball court, roughly one mile from De Anza, is an alternative playing surface for multiple sports, tennis, pickleball, basketball, and roller hockey. This type of mixture has been used to support all four sports in the past. I request the council attempt to contact and discuss with the vendor who lays a surface of Grape Arbor or De Anza to see if alternative surface types can be used to accommodate all sports noted. The third solution is the Calabasas Agora Rec Center is due to open in the summer rather than the fall of 2022 and has available indoor pickleball courts able to accommodate all weather conditions. And if the noise and decibel level is of concern as the LA Times has reported in the past is an issue to local residents specifically at the Avalon community this could potentially alleviate that issue. If you remove the ability to play hockey at the Anza Park, we will have nowhere else to go and play. Pickleball does have alternatives. On a personal note, I've played hockey most of my life in nearly every league from West Covina to Burbank to here. And it's crucial and not only essential to the community, but a positive influence on the emotional and mental well being of all those who play. The faltering of Tri Valley Roller Hockey League had more to do with the pandemic and Ned's approaching retirement than a lack of interest. They simply coincided at an inopportune time compounded with the lack of access to the amenities. I believe in being solution-based in my life and work and collectively working towards a resolution that would appease all parties. Since a community is for everyone, not a select few who play two out of the three sports, there's an answer here that works for everyone. And I urge the council to work towards a positive resolution rather than settling for a solution that does not appease all parties. One of the definitions of community is a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. I assure you, those who play hockey are kindred spirits who unequivocally love the sport and wish to not let it wither in Calabasas as well as Southern California. We all want to ensure that all men, women, and children have access to all sports, increasing the growth and interest, not just in hockey or pickleball, but every sport under the sun. I urge the council to consider these comments with an open heart and mind to preserve the past legacy of De Anza Park for future generations to enjoy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Tafaro. Um, I know uh, the next speaker. Um, next one is Francisco uh, Rivera, followed by Rosa Besser. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rivera. Okay. Uh, Can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Good evening, distinguished members of the commission and everyone attending this meeting. My name is Francisco X. Rivera. I'm a proud resident of Calabasas for the last 11 years and the Spanish TV and radio voice of the Los Angeles Kings. Besides my broadcast role, I'm also a consultant and team ambassador to lead our ad reach strategy with our Latino community in Southern California and Latin America. On the professional side, my main goal has always been to grow the game within our community and have more people fall in love with the game of hockey the same way I did when I moved to the United States from Mexico City. It's like getting more young players, like our very own Trevor Moore, Thousand Oaks native, that as I understand, came to the Anza Park as a young kid to play hockey, and he's currently one of the best players in our playoff-bound LA Kings. Now, on a personal side, I started coming to the Anza Park to skate last year. I was trying to improve on my skill and start learning more about the hockey on the technical side of things. I then started to meet a, a very young and a very enthusiastic crowd with a very high skill level, that has embraced me for day one, even though I was just a novice playing the game of hockey. I've had people take hours of their time to give me tips and show me insights of skating and hockey without having the need to, but that's what a hockey family is about. It's, it's always about taking care of your brothers and teammates. 
And after spending the last four years helping the Kings grow into Southern California and our Hispanic communities, I've been very hands-on with initiatives such as adding prominent celebrities to our broadcast to help spread the message or leading the efforts to establish our Mexico City Junior Kings program, the only academy program of its kind of any major league sports team in the U.S. Now, as a member of the team, those have been highlights of my career. But speaking on a personal level, when I heard that there were plans to remove our hockey rink from the Anza Park, it really touched a nerve. Because at the end of the day, I'm just another hockey enthusiast that comes to the park to have a good time, mingle with other people that have the same interests and want to hear stories about how the sport has transform transformed the life of other hockey players. I understand that my fellow Kings advisory board member, the former Los Angeles City Controller, Wendy, Wendy Gruel, has respectfully reached out to Mayor Pro Tem David Shapiro to support our cause and express what this ring means to our community. I have also touched base with Echoes of Hope, the foundation led by NHL, NHL Hall of Famer, and our proud team president, Lou Robitaille, as they recently led a hockey clinic in Calabasas. They're also willing to support us and they're big proponents of helping our youth by teaching them the fundamentals of hockey. So I really appreciate your time and attention on this matter and look forward to seeing hockey remain a fixture within our Calabasas community. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Rivera. Our next speaker is Rosa Besser. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I too am an avid hockey fan since I grew up and was born in Montreal. However, I am not here to speak tonight about the only sport that exists, that's hockey. Um, I am here to address uh, the strategic priorities which the city council spoke to during two meetings and was put out as a survey to uh, residents and non-residents of Calabasas. I would like to know, and I hope the director will um, speak to this, as to what happens now. All these priorities, uh, I was told, will be brought to the commissions I am, of course, concerned about Wild Walnut Park and the dog park and kids play area. I am very concerned because things are going to be, as I uh, was told, prioritized and moved forward. As I have said before, and will address City Council Wednesday night, the dog park at Wild Walnut and children's area has already been approved, has already been uh, supported, has already been uh, voted yes unanimously by city council with your commission support. We need to move on. Interestingly enough, during these, these priorities, the number one of all priorities, and it was not under Parks and Rec, was under environmental. People chose to identify potential property acquisitions for the purposes of future parkland and open space designations. Parks are part of that. We need to move forward and we can't wait any longer. This has gone on long enough. Commissioners, please support Wild Walnut Park to push it forward and what is happening next. We have waited and waited. Thank you, bow wow. Thank you, Rosa. Are there any more speakers that have added are added to that list? Uh, yes, Sorry. the next one is using a generic name called Zoom oh. user and followed by Hector D Diaz. Zoom user, you have three minutes to address the commission. Hello to the uh, city council and everybody on today's meeting. Um, I am a local resident and I wanted to speak on behalf of the demolition of the hockey board system at De Anza Park. Um, this would lead to the end of a 25 year park history supporting the hockey community. I was able to review the previous meetings regarding the teardown and notice some misinformation circling about different aspects of the rink. Um, one of which is the board standard, the board system standard, its condition and its safety. I'd like to point out that the current board system 
is one variation of industry standard board systems that vary from plexiglass and aluminum systems, completely plastic systems like used in Burbank, to plexiglass and wood systems like used at De Anza, in Camrillo, North Hollywood, and Moore Park. Uh, I personally met with a licensed contractor with experience in the sport to inspect and discuss the current state of the siting system there. He offered to present estimates to the commission to make upgrades that can be expected to last the next 15 years. The investment to renew the sideboard system, according to the licensed contractor, is minor and only ranges around $15,000 to rejuvenate and, and run the system. His findings include that three or four two by six boards need to be replaced, some plywood in one of the corners also replaced, rebalancing of the gates for smooth function, uh, to resecure any loose plexiglass to the boards themselves, and a basic repaint of the outside of the boards to reseal for future weather. He mentioned to me that the areas that have been damaged uh, were not caused by weather wear, uh, but rather sprinkler systems uh, that wet those areas uh, consistently and daily. I also wanted to point out that this board system was in service until the pandemic shutdowns ended fully active leagues here, which I was a participant of. Um, and there were over a hundred weekly players uh, active in these leagues that suddenly ended. And these boards were deemed safe by the director of Tri-Valley Roller Hockey and are in the same condition they were in when the leagues officially ended. Uh, in over 25 years, there have been zero cases of injury or litigation as a result of the board system injuring anyone using the sport court. Uh, the current system is very robust, in great condition, and very safe for continued use currently right now. So I kindly request the director of Tri-Valley Roller Hockey is contacted for written statement on periodic maintenance so the commission can have a better idea of the minimal investment required to maintain the existing board system. And I uh, would like to leave the council to consider that we do not have to get rid of hockey nor the hockey board system in order to expand our sport offerings at De Anza. I understand pickleball is in question and I think it is very reasonable to keep hockey intact and add pickleball to the facility and to the community offerings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for our records, um, all we see on our screen is Zoom user. Could you tell us your name, please? Yes, ma'am. My name is Marcin Yanishevsky. Martin? Marcin, M-A-R-C-I-N. Yeah. The last name is kind of long, Yanishevsky. You want me to spell that for you? Please. J-A-N-I-S-Z-E-W. SKI. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to continue business. Um, um, Chair, oh, there are more? three more people in the oh, public. Okay. Um, next one is Hector Diaz. Hector Diaz. <laughs> uh, over 300 people on my contact list as a previous proponent of Calabasas hockey we ran a pickup game for over like 20 years with a group of committed individuals and the reason I bring that up is so that I, I will, I will bring you in after we get these announcements okay All right, bye. I'm sorry there's somebody unmuted but anyway the uh, point I'm trying to make is that with a list of over 300 people with a long history of playing for over 20 years since the inception of the rink. I'm a strong proponent and advocate of keeping the league going and offering my assistance in any way I can to continue the league running. I have a personal contact and connection with the former operator. However, we have not discussed the possibility of continuing the league under a different direction uh, besides what has been done in the past. And uh, until now, there hasn't really been a need. However, now that things are changing and, and, you know, the whole COVID situation, I'm open and willing to, with my experience, I also have worked for the Los Angeles Kings. I'm a former collegiate hockey player, junior level hockey player as well, willing to offer my services with a track record of coaching at the Calabasas rink for children and adults. And uh, also, just as a side note, the city of uh, Camarillo did offer me the ability to uh, to continue 
to continue and grow a league over there as well. Um, however, Calabasas is uh, is a more attractive opportunity for the city of Calabasas because of the amount of people that are already used to playing there compared to Camarillo. And so I'm here as a resource for the city so that they can uh, call upon me to uh, assist in any way to continue the hockey community growing forward, uh, bringing in, I, I, if I think uh, someone mentioned there was some amount of money that was coming in because of the amount of people coming to uh, play and participate in the sport of uh, roller hockey there in the uh, in Calabasas. So I'm willing to assist in any way I can, organizing leagues, um, hosting trainings, um, helping the city in any way that I can offer my expertise and assistance in running leagues, training, and uh, growing, uh, growing the sport of hockey as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, next one, it's is Todd Strayette? Okay, Mr. Strayette. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Um, I've been a Calabasas resident since 2005, and I've played uh, hockey at the rink at De Anza Park for over a decade. And again, my name is Todd Chayette, C H A Y E T. Uh, one uh, thing that I, I think it's important for the council, uh, sorry, the commission to investigate and consider uh, before making a final decision on um, whether or not to convert the rink into pickleball courts are the uh, uh, potential environmental impacts, including uh, the impact of noise. Um, I, I'm not sure if the commission has seen the article that was published on March 3rd, 2022 in the LA Times uh, entitled, Pickleball noise is fueling neighborhood drama from coast to coast. Uh, in fact, that, that article outlines uh, complaints and lawsuits around the country. Um, we've had uh, lawsuits in Newport Beach. Um, they talk about lawsuits in South Carolina. Uh, residents as far as 100 yards away from pickleball courts have complained of severe mental suffering, frustration and anxiety uh, and interference with enjoyment of property. So that's something that uh, I think should be carefully considered. We want to avoid uh, any type of litigation like that uh, and any impact it could have on our city. Also, there have been uh, other <clears throat> areas that have uh, had major disputes regarding pickleball and noise, uh, including uh, the Goleta Parks and Recreations Department. Um, after the center finally did approve uh, pickleball courts, they had to take additional steps uh, to address neighbors' concerns, including adding wooden fencing to dampen sound and taking other measures that I, I imagine were very expensive. So I, I hope the uh, commission will carefully consider that as well. Uh, apparently, the, the article outlines the noise levels of pickleball, and it's apparently uh, 80 decibels or so, which is about the sound of a freight train at 50 yards. Um, and the, the hockey rink has been there for decades, and I'm unaware of any complaints of noise uh, from any hockey game that's been played there. Uh, we just played a game uh, last night, and obviously we didn't have any complaints. Um, <clears throat> I'm also concerned that uh, having children play on the play structure so close to the hockey rink may have uh, impacts on their hearing uh, if, the, if it is, in fact, that loud. Uh, there may be better locations for pickleball, like indoors or, or in other locations, not near uh, children's play structures or people's houses. So uh, hockey's just been a great source of exercise and meeting friends and spending time with family. Um, and uh, I hope the, count, the commission will carefully uh, consider uh, these, these issues and, and preserve this treasure for the community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chad. Um, the next item on the, uh, are there any more the speakers? Chair, there are two more persons here. Oh, okay. Uh, next one is Steve Kirby. Steve, go ahead. You have a three minutes. Next one, followed by Kevin Dintinsky. Hello, committee. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak and taking the time to hear the comments about keeping roller hockey at Vianza Park. I live in Oak Park, but I am very connected to Calabasas because my wife was born and raised 
on a house on Calabasas Lake, and she went to Viewpoint. My mother-in-law, Sue Silver, has lived at the lake since 1994 and is a member of the Calabasas Tim and Swim Club, Tennis and Swim Club, where I visited many times as a guest with my family to swim and play. I love the, the parks and facilities that Calabasas has to offer. And uh, as the committee acknowledged in the December 13th, 2021 meeting, there are no other rinks to play hockey in the Conejo Valley or surrounding areas. The next closest rinks are in Moore Park or Burbank or North Hollywood, or an option would be go to Simi Valley to play ice hockey. Uh, the options uh, of parents to take their kids to play Simi to play ice hockey is not what I want for my kids. Ice hockey is not accessible sport, roller hockey is. Kids can practice skating anywhere but we need a rink to play games. Um, we, you know, we talk about the need for children to play outside and get off their devices. Um, playing hockey will accomplish this. Young kids do not play pickleball. I grew up playing my entire life, about 30 years, ever since I was eight years old. This sport means a lot to me. I recently just bought my eight-year-old son a goalie mask for his birthday last week, and I've already taken him out to De Anza Park to play. He absolutely loves the game. Without De Anza Park having a hockey rink, my son would not have a place to play real games. My concern is for the future generations that want to play hockey in Calabasas and the surrounding area will not have an opportunity to do this. And the dwindling hockey population will get worse without this park. I ask that the committee take the time to consider all options of pickleball in the area. One thing that note and should be considered would be that the Agora Hills Calabasas Community Center, less than a mile away, already has pickleball courts and could potentially be reopening in the fall. Thank you for hearing my comments about the Anza Park and I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Uh, sure, there's one more person here. Okay. Uh, Kevin Lutinsky, go ahead. Hello, can everybody hear me? Great, uh, good, good evening, everybody. Um, when I first was uh, informed about what was going on with the park, um, you know, I, I felt compelled to, to jump in and get involved. Um, I'm gonna come from a more personal perspective, that one that I believe um, many of my friends uh, and generations before and after me will share. Um, I am 32 years old. I moved to Calabasas when I was in elementary school. I've grown up playing hockey my entire life since I was five, played at the college level. And De Anza Park has been an in instrumental part of my upbringing here. Um, not only the Tri-Valley Roller Hockey Rink, um, the experience is provided uh, through that league. And I played there as a player. I ended up uh, refereeing in the league and I ended up coaching young kids, uh, including my young brother, who's a younger brother who's 10 years younger than me. And I will say that De Anza Park, through my upbringing in middle school, um, and in high school was a central hub for my friends to get together. It kept us out of trouble. We were there probably three to four times a week on weekends. We were getting exercise. We were meeting. We were playing a game that we all loved outdoors. Um, and I do believe through hockey, um, there are many life lessons to, to, to take from it. Um, team building, teamwork, relationships. My, my, most of my friends in my life are a result of my uh, experiences playing hockey um, all over the place and specifically at De Anza Park. Um, I, I currently now reside in Oak Park, but um, every, you know, they don't do it as often, um, I don't think, as they used to now, they do the Sunday night games, but we used to go there, whether it was every Wednesday night, Sunday night, or just because it was open and the nets were there, at whenever we, you know, felt like it. And it was an escape for a, a lot of us. I am currently also expecting my first child uh, to be born in, in October. And the prospect of not being able to lace up the skates with my young son and bring him to the park to enjoy the similar experiences I had growing up, experiences that I know are going to be with me for the rest of my life, the friendships that I've created, um, that's unimaginable to me. So I hope that everybody can come together and figure out a, a solution, a resolution where, you know, if pickleball is something that wants to, you know, wants to happen, you guys want to install that there, there has to be a way that hockey is preserved because the, the rink there, the league and that hockey community is uh, bigger than I, I can describe. And so many of my colleagues here have done a, a fantastic job, I think, but um, I hope that this is, 
uh, more of a personal side that I know that many others can, um, you know, share and they do share throughout their lives too. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much, Mr. Latinsky, for your comments. Um, Mr. Yin, are there any more speakers? Uh, no, Chair, just no more heads in the public audience. Okay. Um, one more, okay. just. Oh, one more. Hold on a second. Uh, no, I think she did already. Rosa Besser, she used her three minutes already. Rick Young is raising his hands now. It's on and off. Uh, okay, only Rosa Besser's hand still up. Okay, uh, <laughs> now I'd like no more hands now, Chair. Sure. Are we done? Public comments? Okay. Um, I, uh, um, Ms. Green, I would like to ask you a question. I know we approved the agenda in the order that it's currently uh, written, uh, but we do have a speaker who um, would like to speak about something about the Senior Center. Is it possible to move that up? So, so that would be public comment. He could do that now. That would that would be where Rick could talk about that now. It wouldn't be part of the agenda. He'd have to speak as public comment. Um, okay. So, Rick, if you want to speak now, you have three minutes. Is he there? He is here, but... Um, I'm sorry, who's going to speak? Rick Young. Okay, hold on. Okay, Rick, it's your turn. Hello? Hello, Rick. Hello. Hi, Rick. We're Hi. here. Okay, I'm here. Hi, I'm Rick Young, co-chair of the Calabasas Senior Center of Hospitality Committee. I'm a resident of Calabasas and I've been with the Senior Center since before conception. Um, I am a volunteer there. I am on staff there and live in Calabasas. Approximately three years ago, I created an event entitled Festival of the Arts for our center, and it was attended by over three or 400 people. The Festival of the Arts won our center a national award as well as recognition uh, regionally and nationally. The event could not have been made possible if it were not supported by our hospitality committee and the other 25 volunteers that helped to make this event a huge success. Soon after that event, our center had to close down due to COVID-19 pandemic and remained closed for the last two and a half years, except for Zooming. During those two and a half years, we lost our entire membership and many participants in classes, as well as instructors due to the pandemic and only have been having Zoom classes. The time has now come to rebuild our center's membership, its activities, clubs, programs, and excursions, and our lectures. So I came up with a, an event entitled, We're Back, Let's Celebrate. Our event is going to take place on June 3rd from two to four. We will be celebrating the center's sixth anniversary. And at that event, which will be free and open to all that are 50 and over, you will be able to receive information on membership, programs, activities, clubs, excursions, lectures, and, and receive our new schedule of class brochure. It's the first one to be handed out in over two years. We will have refreshments, entertainment, 
class demos, door prizes, and vendors that will be given, uh, handing out giveaways and a lot more going on. In addition to all of that, our Calabasas Care Club have partnered with the Eastwood Foundation for their June project, which will be entitled Be a Friend to Animals, where they will be collecting the following items at our event, which can be gently used items such as collars, leashes, bowls, uh, crates, pet carriers, blankets, and small rugs, etc. These items will be taken from us by the Eastwood Foundation and used to help the homeless pets that the foundation watches over until they are placed in their forever homes. Wow, what an event. And you might say, you might also want to help out. And how can you help out? We are currently looking for volunteers. Rick, sorry, your three minutes is up. Okay, okay. Um, Rick, thank you very much for your input. And thank you, um, Ms. Green, for being flexible and allowing us to wiggle around the uh, schedule. Um, okay, we're going to go back now to the um, continued business, uh, the resolution of the Parks, Recreation, and Education Commission of the City of Calabasas, California, setting the regular meeting dates and times for the commission. Director Green, you have the floor. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner. So my report tonight um, is regarding the resolution uh, of the pre setting the regular meeting dates and times. Um, on March 23rd, the City Council adopted resolution number 2022-1769 of commission procedures, which directed commissions to adopt a resolution to uh, officially setting meeting schedules of not less than quarterly per year and not prior to 6 p.m. Um, so attached in the packet is a resolution stating that our quarterly meetings will now be um, January, April, April, July, and October at 6 p.m. So the recommendation is that the pre-adopt uh, resolution 2022.01 with these new changes. That's the end of my report. Do you have any questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, I really liked the idea when you had a special meeting between the regular scheduled meetings to address something that was of, of, was of importance. Um, will you be precluded from uh, when you need to do something to move forward uh, to wait until we have these regular meetings? No, we could still have special meetings. These are going to be our standard set schedule. Okay, because uh, I thought that was a, a new innovation for us and a good one. And I really appreciate your taking the time to do that. No, absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, this is not an action item, is it? Or is it an action? It is item? an action item. Um, you all have to, to vote and adopt the resolution. Okay. So the resolution is in your packet. But yes, you have to vote on uh, changing the times and the dates of our meetings. <clears throat> is there a set day of the week? Um, or date within the yes, those? it'll still be the second Monday of the month. It's just going to move to 6 p.m. and then change to those standard months of January, April, July, and October. I see. Um, if it's okay with the chair, I would move that we adopt the resolution to have our meetings set quarterly the second Monday of those months, beginning at 6 p.m. I, I second that. I second it. Okay. Um, any discussion? I call for the vote. Oh, yes, Julie. I just want to confirm that that will begin then in July and continue for October. So it would be July and October that we would be the second Monday of the month beginning at 6 p.m. beginning for 2022, correct? That is correct. Um, I have another question. Um, does it change if the first um, Monday is a holiday? Because this July 4th is on the first Monday. So will it be moved or will it be a still on the It's 11th? the second Monday, Monday. So it should be July 11th. It'll be July 11th. It will be. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Any more questions, comments? 
Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Motion passes. I, I, uh, is he still here? I don't see him. Heath, are you still with us? No, he's not. I don't see him in the uh, panelists. Yeah. Okay, so then the motion passed. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five, five. We have five votes. The motion. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and then the COVID 19 update. And I believe that's you also, uh, screen. Hi. <laughs> uh, so the, the COVID-19, I just wanted to update the commission on, on what's going on with the city and our facilities. Uh, the recommendation is just to receive this report for file. There's nothing to, to vote on with this um, report. I just wanted to update you that all the city facilities are still requiring uh, vaccinations or uh, proof of vaccination or proof of a negative COVID-19 test within the last 72 hours and masks are recommended but not required. Um, this is true across all uh, city facilities, city hall, the library, tennis and swim, De Anza senior center. Um, but I just wanted to update you on that. I know there's been a lot of questions and, and, and back and forth on issues, but we are still standing with the executive order that the city manager put in place um, only that the masks are not no longer required, only recommended. So if there's any questions on that, please let me know. Thank you. All right, we're gonna jump to committee reports. Um, the Arts Council, Laurel and Megan. Yes, um, I did contact Erica last week and um, I had some questions about the um, arts program moving forward. And I'd like to share the questions that I asked and uh, the answers that I received um, and then um, open it for any kind of further recommendations um, for arts activities from the commission. The first question I asked was, um, where are we with the arts festival? Has money been budgeted for it? If so, how much? Is there a plan to hold the event in the future? The answer that Erica gave me was, the city has decided to move away from the formal arts festival and implement new special events. The request for the 22-23 uh, fiscal year was 15,000 for arts programs and events. So I assume that's for all arts programs and events. There is no plan to hold a fine arts festival in the future. Question two, a new hotel has been built. This should have generated money for arts in public places. How much was collected? Who in the city is in charge of this? Who was on the committee to select the art? And what is the plan for the art installation with this money? The answer from Erica is, this program is coordinated within the community development part department. I do not know how much money was collected or who selects the art. I will get in touch with the community development director when he returns from vacation next week. And I uh, know that we have a, a later agenda item for future um, items. And I would like to uh, put this item on our next agenda um, to find out uh, more information about the art in public places when we get to that. Third question, what other arts activities are being discussed by your department for the future? Are there any plans to involve students? The answer. I am open to any arts activities you wish to propose. I will also get with the recreation team to see if they have any ideas. Question four, are there plans to return uh, the program of displaying rotating art displays in City Hall in the, the lobby and in the um, council room? If so, when would this begin and who would be in charge of the selection process? The answer, I would hope we, return, we, we would return to the program um, do you have any additional information on the program that you can share? I'm happy to do what I can to get it reinstated. And I do know the person that used to select the rotating art. Um, I don't know uh, what our budget is, if it comes out of the uh, 15,000 that was um, indicated in uh, question number one. Um, so we would have to uh, investigate 
that in terms of budget allocations. Last question, will you be setting up a regular process for me to meet with you to make plans to keep everyone updated? Um, and Erica's answer was, if this is your requ request, yes, we can schedule meetings to discuss plans. So that's sort of where we are at this point with the arts program. Um, there have been changes in staff. There has been the pandemic. We've had a lot of um, things that have gotten in the way. Um, you know, school has been virtual. Um, and so um, I hope that we can begin to uh, support the arts. I believe it's important, uh, especially given all of our experiences with the pandemic. Um, arts provide a necessary outlet for emotional um, and mental expression about the things that we've experienced and how we feel. I think it's particularly important for our students to have this outlet and for us to encourage it. So um, I'm happy to meet with Erica to explore uh, other options, other activities that her staff feels they could support because the way this all works, you know, we can come up with ideas, but the staff at the city of Calabasas has to uh, implement those. You know, we have volunteers, but the staff is really in charge. So it's a two, you know, partnership when we do these things. Um, but I'm, I know Megan is, uh, has volunteered to be on the committee and, um, and I welcome that. And, you know, we, we can set up meetings with Erica uh, to explore all of this. And I'm certainly open to any suggestions that our pre-commission has for arts activities, whether this evenings, if you have anything that comes to mind, or you can always email me and I can bring those um, ideas to uh, Eric, uh, Erica for our meetings. And um, I'll be contacting Erica to try to set up a, a schedule of, of meetings um, to discuss all of this. It's a very thorough report. Thank you, Laurel. What I'd like to do is throw this out to the commission and see if they have any experiences um, uh, building on what uh, Laurel has mentioned. Does anybody have any ideas? Billy, is that you? Yes, it is. Uh, Laurel, thank you for that report. I wanted to just make a suggestion in terms of programming. An idea that uh, has been germinating with me for quite some time is perhaps a photography contest that could be intergenerational. So we could target um, members of the senior center, members through the Las Virginia School District and others, and really focusing on certain aspects around like a theme, much like uh, we do with the Environmental Commission. Uh, the commission comes up with a theme every year and the recycling contest is uh, largely coordinated through um, teachers, through the Las Virginia School District, but it's open to any Calabasas resident. The nice thing about having a photography contest is that we could use a publicly hosted site or we could use the city of Calabasas um, to upload photographs. And then it, we could run a contest where people could vote electronically um, to be able to vote on the winners within a theme. So I'm just trying to think of something that's cost-effective, that targets um, multiple, members of our constituency and applies or you know addresses the needs of uh, multiple groups within our community and also thematically something that ties into whatever it is the commission or the city council is really hoping to achieve with our parks rec and education so i would like to suggest a photography contest that's great i've written your suggestion down and i appreciate that thank you um megan Yes, Laurel, thank you for your report and I look forward to meeting with you. Um, I, I started my career as an elementary school teacher in 1997 and for the past 13 years I've owned a preschool in Calabasas. Um, my favorite event that we do annually and I did as a teacher in the classroom was an event that brings families together. Um, so inter it's an intergenerational art, what I call an art in. So we actually set up for my school, we set up 100 easels and we have a hundred canvases and we have a theme and we come together and we and the parent and the child paint together. Um, I think that the, Laurel what you're hitting on was is really important as art is a healing 
um, apparatus of healing. And our kids have gone through so much. We've all gone through so much. And um, I think that there we do um, have space for much more events that include families with young children in our community and engage them together intergenerationally, whether it's grandparents with children or parents with children, but um, hosting events, an event like that um, can be, I love the photography and, and a contest idea, but I think also it's nice to have open-ended art projects that bring people together in that space of healing and sharing a common space in our community. And we can display that art in my school, we display it and we have lots of different opportunities that we do, um, what we do with the art that we create together through the year. But I think that it would be beautiful to think of the Civic Center um, area with lots of um, easels and um, canvases and families coming together to paint and having music, like maybe the high school kids can be playing music. And it just is a real great opportunity to bring our families together in a healing environment. Great, thank you. I've written that suggestion down as well. We'll definitely put that under the mix. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, I have one. Okay. Um, the photography contest sounds great. I just want you to know uh, that the Senior Center has a very vibrant photography club. And um, I can't speak off the cuff of whether or not they'd be interested in partnering with, the, with us, but I don't see why not. <laughs> and uh, maybe you could, uh, I'd be happy to give you the name of the chair of the photography club and uh, see if that might something might, might come from that. Okay. Um, also, I, I'd like um, to uh, look at museums. Uh, if there's any museum programs that would tie in with our curriculum. For instance, um, there's, uh, there's museums that deal with, all, they have all different kinds of art shows. And um, I think that we might want to use that as well. And I like the idea of multi-generational opportunities, bringing uh, different generations together. And uh, let's, I would like to explore that as well. And I believe uh, Anika would like to say something. No? You left a message in the chat. Oh. Yeah. Can you see it? Saying, unfortunately, she had another commitment at 6.45, but it was a pleasure serving oh, wait on the a commission. Let's see. Oh, she's uh, leaving? It just says in the chat, hi everyone, unfortunately I have to go as I have another commitment at 6.45. It was a pleasure serving on this commission and I hope to see all of you again soon. Okay, yeah, it went came by so fast, I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay, um, all right. Um, as far as, uh, oh, one more thing. I like the idea of uh, the art uh, uh, that is being submitted to have a theme. For instance, we just had Arbor Day that would be a theme that we could look into, you know, trees, um, sunsets, whatever. The idea of using the themes or seasons even, winter, spring, summer, fall. Well, we don't really have winter here, but <laughs> but uh, we don't have a real winter. We could pretend. We but, uh, <laughs> they could go up to the mountains and find winter. Okay. But uh, a theme, the concept of themes, if summer would be ocean themes or sunsets or things like that uh, to get kids into really looking at things rather than just taking their camera and going here and there. Okay. So um, I, I thank you very much. That was a wonderful report and um, it's inspired us to give it some thought. Thank you. And I'd like, if we could, as I said, to put on for our future agenda item, the report on art in public places. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll put that on for future agenda items. Okay. Um, all right, let me go back here. I was taking notes on a separate page. Give me a second to get back to where I was. I have a lot of notes from this meeting. Uh, our next, um, oh God, hold on a second. I'm sorry, my phone is, oh, I should turn it off. Okay, uh, the Community Center Alliance. Can you hear that or is that bothering anybody just besides me? Uh, the Community Center Alliance, I believe that's Heath. And he's not here. Oh. I, I can speak to that, Charlotte. Okay, thank you. Um, 
so some good news about the community center. Uh, we put out a press release, I think uh, a week or so ago that uh, the community center received $2.0 million in grants um, over the last week. A million dollars came from a federal earmark from uh, Congressman Liu's office and 844,000 came from Supervisor Kuehl's office. And then we had a $166,000 grant uh, from the uh, Regional Park and Open Space District, the county. Uh, so with that $2 million, um, the city will be replacing the roof and doing some other maintenance repairs. Um, but I thought that was some uh, great news to share with the group. Um, we have contracted with a project manager to complete the roof repairs. Uh, he is going through that process now. Um, we are looking at a timeline. We're hoping that'll be in fall, though uh, with the, um, the chain, the, the supply chain, there's some uh, could put us in a delay, but we will, um, we're still looking towards fall to open the community center. Um, so that's just an update I thought I'd share in, in that regard. Oh, thank you. Could I just ask, how much is the roof going to cost? We've been bamboozled with so many numbers. I would like to just get an idea. Sure. Well, first off, we're going to, uh, the, the project manager is going to prepare a request for proposals, oh, oh, okay. and then we'll get bids back. Until then, we don't know. Um, the cost of construction has basically tripled lately. So at this point, we can't really say. We're estimating 800 to a million dollars, um, but we'll know more when that RFP goes out and the bids come in. And is the, uh, there was some reference made uh, during our public comments uh, about uh, when the roof, they anticipate the, the roof being done because they want to move pickleball from where it was at the end of back into the uh, community center. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea of the, the timeline for this? The, the target is fall of this year. Yes. Um, again, that's dependent on supplies and um, how that goes, but that is our goal, fall of this year. Okay, great. Uh, okay, I'm going to speak a little bit about the senior center. Excuse me. Um, oh, I just yes, have a quick too. question for Director Green about the, the community center before we leave that agenda item. Sure. Uh, are there plans to have a reopening or some sort of event that's aligned with the when it reopens to generate interest and to allow the community back into the facility as it's reopening? There is. Um, there's a little caveat with that. Uh, with the with the grant allocations, the city can't spend the money of uh, earmarked grants until we get approved agreements. Uh, some of those grants, the federal grant is going to take a while. The county grants will take a little bit. So we may be phasing those projects. And if we're phasing those projects, we may open for, let's say, basketball and, and have that going and then have to close down a few rooms to do the other maintenance. Um, but there is a plan to have a reopening. Um, there's a plan to get a consultant to survey the community on what they want in the facility so we can actually program it to what the community actually needs, wants, what services. Uh, so we'll be working on that throughout the months while the roof's being repaired. Um, we are trying to do a, a kind of a grand reopening, but again, that's just dependent on when all these funds come in and how we can uh, schedule maintenance. But at some point, we will. Once all of the maintenance is done, whether that be three or four months after the uh, we, we get in the building, we will have a grand reopening. Okay, great. Thank you for that. And I wanted to just make a suggestion that um, Commissioner Wiseman and I made last summer um, mm -hmm. around the event and the space, which is to potentially generate interest. Um, I might suggest a touch a truck event that would be in conjunction with that reopening. Um, that could be easily or you know, relatively easily coordinated with our area law enforcement, our area uh, fire departments, those kinds of things. It's a wonderful opportunity to get young families um, to the parking lot that's adjacent, either in that space or across and the, the facilities. But um, just a, I've seen that, that very successful in other communities. And so I just wanted to make that suggestion uh, in conjunction with the reopening. Thank you, absolutely. Wonderful. Okay, we've got a very creative uh, commission here. A lot of good ideas. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about the Senior Center. 
as you know, we had a, a very long pandemic and uh, we've closed our doors for a long time. And we're on the brink now of reopening it, really reopening it. We're having an official reopening, but it is now really open for um, class of classes. And we have, a, we have a catalog with excursions, lectures, um, and just uh, we're hoping to get parties soon. And, uh, and our interest clubs are even meeting at the senior center. I'm gonna read to you a, a list of some of our interest clubs that are already having meetings at the senior center, which really is wonderful because it means we're coming back alive. It's not just a piece of, uh, it's not just a um, sitting in the back of the uh, library. Um, just wait, let me get my list to you out here. Okay, these are the interest clubs that are back in business. The book club, a bridge club, Canasta, Caring Calabasas, Mexican Train, Photography, Ping Pong, Poker, and we have two Scrabble clubs. Uh, also hiking and the lunch club meet off site. So when we opened up the senior center, we realized that there were a lot of people who just wanted to socialize with people who had common interests. And so these clubs sort of evolved based on demand. Uh, we originally had a Mahjong club that I started, but it got so big, there were 75 people. And so we said, we just said, you know, you come in and play when you want to play. We're not going to, uh, but I did organize a Mahjong, um, a Mahjong tournament and we'll be trying to do that again. Uh, but one of the things, this is May, May is uh, older, older American month. And our senior center has prided itself on being a hub of activities to enrich the lives of seniors so they could age in place or age with a feeling of waking up in the morning and have something important or valued to do with their time. Um, so the senior, a life here as a senior has been ad adversely impacted a lot of people negatively. Um, there's a feeling of loneliness sometimes and depression. So we have really created a place where we can mitigate some of that uh, with fun activities. Um, so with the membership going on hold for a long time, we're looking to reinstate or renew, we're asking people to renew their memberships. Um, if you're not ready to renew your membership, you can still come into the senior center. If you are a resident, it's $3 a day. And if you're a non-resident, it's $5 a day. So you can still walk in and do something of importance at the senior center. Um, what else were they gonna say? Okay, well, we have a reservation system that we did not have before for tables. So if you wanna play Canasta or Mahjong or Scrabble or Bridge, you can call up and make a reservation um, for a session, either a morning session or an afternoon session. And just to give you a phone number, make it easy for you, the Senior Center phone number is 818-224-1777, 224-1777. So um, that's about all I wanna say. I just wanna remind you that we are gonna be moving tech help. We had one session with tech help, but I think we're gonna wait until after spring break when the kids come back to resume our tech help, which is a free program for anyone who wants to come into the Senior Center get help with their technology uh, devices. Um, and that's about it. Do um, you have any questions about the Senior Center? Uh, I try to answer them. Okay, next, okay. All righty. Um, oh, the next was the student member that she left. So I'm gonna share a little bit about her. She was very proud. Uh, she's going to Cornell. Her, she has a one-year term as our student a member, and she really has been a wonderful student member, very insightful and articulate. And I'm sure we all wish her about a lot of good luck in her future endeavors. Okay, so now we have a director's report. Hello, commissioners. Uh, so a couple of things on my report. I want to report about um, this weekend's uh, bunny trail event. I want to thank our staff who put that together. Um, we had over 350 children registered and probably a thousand people come through the park that day. Um, it was a beautiful day. Uh, it was so hot on Friday, so we were glad it was wonderful weather on Saturday. But um, 
if you don't know much about that event, it is pretty amazing. Each each family gets 30 minutes. So they start off with 10 minutes with a petting zoo and then 10 minutes in arts and crafts and then 10 minutes of an egg hunt and then 10 minutes gathering their candy and running through an obstacle course. So each family gets about 30 minutes to experience um, the event without it being so crowded and kind of rushed and and so they get to really have a good experience um we had a kids dj out there doing games so it was really fun so i'm proud of the team for putting that together um it was my first time seeing it obviously since i'm new and i thought it was a great event so if you can get out there next year it'll be fun um the other things i wanted to go over i wanted to talk a little bit about future agenda item requests um i know I, and I thank the commissioners for, for giving so many ideas on future agenda items. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the structure of those. So if there's anything that you have questions on or you want me to research or look into or the team, that isn't necessarily a future agenda item. A future agenda item is almost an action item, something that I report on, that we vote on. So if it's just something you want more information on, you can ask me to uh, do that and I will present that in the director's report. Um, because I know we're getting a few things. I have Commissioner Elgener's request from last week that I'm going to, to touch on, um, but I just wanted to make that distinction. Um, a future agenda item is something that I'm, staff is going to spend time on, research, and write a staff report and come back with a full presentation to the commission. So if, if that's not something you want for a future agenda item and you just have some questions or something that I can just provide in my director's report, if we can just make that make that distinction clear um, and then we can either way do whichever one you want, but um, if we can make that a, a clear and we can move forward with that. Um, so speaking of that, um, there were a few questions last time. I'm going to talk about the park tour. I know we had, I kind of pushed that off because I wanted to make sure with the city clerk about the Brown Act and how that would work. If we all get together um, anytime that's a meeting, so that has to be a public meeting with a, with a formalized agenda, et cetera, et cetera. So if we want to do a park tour, we're going to have to split that up between um, just a couple of you at a time. So we don't have to have a formal meeting to do that because if we do, then we have public comment and have to post all of that information. And I know that's not really the intent of the park tour, it's just more so you can all see the parks and have questions for me and staff on that. Um, so if that's something we wanna do, we still can, we just gonna have to split it up into multiple, multiple tours. Um, so uh, Julie had asked last time to, if we could explore the possibility for a permanent teen center location. Um, and I think one of our public speakers touched on the strategic initiatives of the council and um, team programming was was kind of top on on that list um, for our section. So, yes, we, we are exploring the possibility of a permanent teen center location. Um, we don't have anything confirmed, so I can't uh, mention that here now, but we that is something that we are looking at. Um, staff is also looking into to team programming. Um, that being at the community center when it opens and also in our, our regular recreation programming. So that has moved kind of to the top of uh, to the front burner of our programming. Um, a team volunteer program, we're looking at that too. Um, uh, Amy Haber, who oversees our recreation section, has an amazing team that's looking at team programming. And uh, that is one thing, starting a volunteer program. So we are looking at that. Um, it was also mentioned to, to provide the significant activities report. That is absolutely doable. We do that every month for the council. We can forward that to the commission so you can see exactly what uh, the council is reading. And that's an update on all of the city departments and the significant activities. So we will begin that um, once we get April's, we will send that out to you. And that'll be coming from, from Trish. Um, let's see, last summer, the program com committee we talked about a bike event or a touch a truck event. Um, so yes, those are great ideas. Uh, we, again, looking at the council strategic initiatives, the special events is on the list as well, kind of revamping those. Hence why I was telling Laurel, we're kind of moving away from the, the formal fine arts event and we're gonna implement some other events. We're looking at a 5K, uh, partnering with a group, a nonprofit group on that. Um, so yes, we definitely can look at the touch a truck event um, and also uh, a bike event. We could look at that as well. So I appreciate all of um, the comments 
And um, again, if there's anything further you want us to provide in detail, then we could do that through the future agenda item process. Um, but I just wanted to give that update. So if there are any questions, please let me know. Wow. Um, does anybody want to um, ask to have an agenda item considered? Well, Laurel, are you moving your mouth? Uh, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, go ahead. Erica, based on what you just said, um, would the information on art in public places not be a future agenda item? Um, correct. It could be if you want us to go, if there's any action you want to take on that. If not, and it's just a question for me to find out this information, then I could get that to you for the director's report, or I can even do that um, in our individual meeting, and you could report back when we when we come to our next meeting. Uh, but I really want to move towards future agenda items to be some sort of action or presentation that the commission would really like to see. So, um, that is up to you. I'm not trying to uh, steer you in any direction, but if it's a director's report, I can do that. Or if you wanted a future agenda item, we could do that as, as well. Well, I mean, I do think that we're supposed to be doing um, art in public places whenever there's a new build. That's correct. We'll be collecting money and there has been a new build. So, um, I mean, you know, we, you could give us information about who's in charge, but the net result is, there should be action taken, right? So I don't know. I mean, I, I'll leave it up to you at this point as to how it should be handled, but I'm not just interested in information about it. I'm interested in getting it done. Sure, sure. Yes, exactly. And that, that's exactly what I need to find out because I, I know it's under the community development department and I know they're, they would be the ones to handle how much money has come in and where that's going to be spent. I don't know if that would be a commission action item. Um, that would be just more of me communicating that information, but I can absolutely find that out for you. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Julie? I uh, wanna say thank you, Commission, um, uh, Director Green for the report. I very much appreciate it. And I also wanted to just make a, um, a an offer that I know when, for the five years when I served on the Environmental Commission, staff identified events where they wanted commission representation so that the burden was not exclusively on staff to have to staff the event. So I might suggest that as you're going through the, uh, the current set of programming, that if you identify um, that you want, like for example, at the bunny event, that you wanted shifts of commission representation to be able to um, help with those events, I think that's a very reasonable request and it's certainly in line with what is happening in other commissions across the city. So I want to put that suggestion out there. Thank you. Absolutely. We would definitely like that a lot. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, I, I have a question. Um, I uh, worked with the city media department to develop our web at the senior center website. Uh, it is, uh, I modeled it after the libraries, which is a website within the city's website. And we have about 10 links that go to different, uh, the archives, the, the, the facilities and things like that. I don't know whether or not we could use it as an information item where it would fall, but I would sure like to go through it page by page, not a lengthy, maybe five or 10 minutes, just to have people see exactly what is going on in the senior center. We have lots of pictures there of the facilities, we can, which we're trying to rent facilities there. Uh, we, we have a newsletter, we can, and just to go through it and sort of like with a little bit of help from Tony, uh, post it and just show people where it's located in the city's website and what, uh, and what, and what the senior center can provide. It's, uh, there are people here in their city still don't know about the senior center. And we, and if we're going to have a really successful membership drive, the more information we can put out there, I think would be helpful. So that was one thing I would like to be considered. I'm not sure if it's an agenda item, if it's an information item, where it would fall, maybe under my thing, when it says senior center, that could be my report. And I would just boom, 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 go right through that. I don't know where it would fall. The other thing is, um, uh, 
review the website. Uh, oh, I think that was it. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, we've had a lot of, we've had still a lot of interest in Creekside Park. And, um, and, and, and the whole thing with parks on the Eastern side of the city. Um, we know that the original land use agreement uh, precluded anyone using the facilities outside of the uh, preschool uh, during the week. I know that we have a city attorney and I was wondering if that person could get their hands on that um, agreement, that licensing agreement. And people have been asking, what's in it? Why can't we do that? And maybe if we had somebody actually look at the agreement, we would get a logical explanation. And maybe that would help us, uh, help people in the community understand what's going on with that, all that space that's lying dormant all week long. Um, so that's one of the other. Sure, I, I can kind of speak to that, Charlotte. Um, so in a, in a preschool licensing agreement, the, the reason why there's times where the public can't be in there is because of these for the safety of the youth. So that's part of a license. We can't have uh, the public interacting uh, with with the preschoolers or in the same area. So that's why it's kind of it's fenced off. Um, so during the times of the preschool, there can't be public in there. So that's kind of where it moved to after 5 p.m. or is it 6 p.m. that the park is open. The park right now is closed due to staffing levels. So it's only, we only have the ability to staff it on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, the time from, I think it's 5.30 or 6 to dusk uh, can't be staffed. We just don't have the staffing for that. But for the licensing, it's um, for the safety of the children. We can't have the public be, be able to access the children from the time of the preschool, which is 7.30 to 5.30. So that's where um, that time frame falls in. So that's a licensing requirement, a state licensing requirement. Um, so that's where the evening and weekend uh, portion of the park is open. And like I said, during the week right now, it's closed because we don't have the staffing to um, man the park and close the gates at that time. So uh, we chose to staff it for Saturdays and Sundays when there's more activity. So I hope that helps. <laughs> it helps me, but I don't know if it would help them. <laughs> I think maybe the HOA needs to hear this. Uh, that would help them understand. It's not a unique feature of their licensing agreement. It sounds like it is. It's not a unique feature. It's a state preschool licensing requirement. Yes. Okay. So that's just totally, no, you're the first person to tell that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the firing line sometimes. Oh, no, we don't that's want it. you to be. Yes, there's, no. there's, there's always a a meaning behind our, our madness, right? <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Your well. state licensing requirement is very powerful. Right. <laughs> All right, well, that's about it. If there's nothing else to discuss, um, may I have a motion to, oh, yes, Julie. I just wanted to ask, if, are there any plans to formally recognize Annika for her contributions? I know that um, during the time when I served on the Environmental Commission, we had uh, we presented our outgoing student commissioners with some sort of city recognition um, at the commission meeting. If that's not possible, perhaps at a future um, city council meeting, if there's an opportunity for the city council to recognize all the student commissioners and to just thank them for their service, I think that that would be a wonderful way to, to commemorate their time. I agree. Yes, I, I believe that's our standard, um, but I don't think we knew this was her last uh, meeting. <laughs> so, um, and she's, didn't she say she was going off to college here soon? So we will try and get in touch with her and see if we can recognize her and obviously give her, I don't know if the city standard is a plaque or a certificate, but we will find that out and absolutely recognize her. Maybe um, we might be, if, if we are opening, I mean, if, if our, um, if our procedure is to open it up for a new student member, if she if her term has expired, perhaps we could invite her to the July meeting to specifically recognize her. Sure. Wonderful idea. 
Thank you. Okay. Okay. I move that we um, uh, adjourn the meeting. Okay. There's a second. I second. Thank you, Brad. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody.